Good morning, good afternoon, and good evening. This is actor and stand-up comedian Derek Neo from AMC's The Terror to Me, and I am hanging out with Galaxy on Comic-Con Radio. They didn't tell you I'm moving to the mainland? All the magazines are looking for photographers out west. Ma, Pop, Shashino. Some more of the pictures that I took turned out like this. What am I doing wrong? If you ask my old professor, he'd say it's a combination of a slow shutter and a shaky hand. And if you ask my Jewish mother, she'd say you've been taking photos of things you shouldn't be. You ever hear of a thing called a yure? Anywhere you go, it can follow you. It's a sign. Like an omen? She returned from the dead. And she persists. The old spirits are here. There is something evil. I can feel it. Whoa. Is there a bakemono among us? What kind of spirit are you? Oh, God! Don't shoot him! Now, until somebody tells me what kind of evil spirit or oriental magic tricks are taking over this place, nobody's leaving. It's easy to want vengeance. Natural as death. Good morning, good afternoon, and good evening. This is Galaxy signing in for Comic-Con Radio. Coverage of pop culture events from around the globe. Amazing interviews with celebrities. Daily recaps and reviews of popular television. Movie reviews. Everything Comic-Con and fandom from around the globe. Comic-Con Radio. Get ready to enter our universe. Let's go. Good morning, good afternoon, and good evening. This is Galaxy on another amazing episode of Comic-Con Radio. Today, we have a very cool dude... He comes from a TV show called Terror Infamy, which I have watched over and over so far. It's not over yet. The season's not done yet. It's an amazing TV series. We have Derek Neo on Comic-Con Radio. Derek, what's up, brother? Hello, hello, Comic-Con Radio world. It is I. Derek me. <laughs> that was pretty cool. That was cheesy but cool. <laughs> I was uh, I was trying to be cool. I don't know. That's I'm good. We'll, yeah. we'll we'll echo that and we'll make it sound cool like those old 1930s radio shows. You know. We'll yes. Just, just filter. Just filter. Just put a cool filter over the whole interview, please. There you go. <laughs> well, you know, thank you for coming on. It's really cool chatting with you. I'm gonna be honest with you. I love Terra Infamy. I didn't watch Terror last year. We still supported the show. We still promoted it. But this year, it's really amazing. Great storyline. Love the whole thing. The entire season is basically about you and the basically demon or spirit. And you're doing amazing on it, man. Oh, thank you so much. I appreciate it. I mean, it was, uh, yeah, an amazing show and experience to be a part of. Um you know, and it's very personal to me as well because, you know, our story uh, takes place during World War II and, and the backdrop is the internment of the Japanese Americans, which actually happened in this country. And my own grandfather was actually uh, in one of these camps. And he also grew up in Terminal Island, which is crazy as well because that's where our series starts out. In. And, um, you know, my character, he, he eventually enlists, Chester enlists as a translator in the military, and my other grandfather uh, was a translator in the military intelligence service, just like Chester. So, you know, it's a once in a lifetime role. I really believe, you know, for me personally, uh, getting to play a character who's a, a composite of, of both of my grandfathers. So it's it very special. You know, you playing this role is a really great homage to your family for that time. I know it was a tragic time. This is, like you said, really close to heart, to home. Both of your grandfathers served during that time. Your family went through it. Your fourth generation Japanese-American. 
Did they ever see any freaky stuff? Did they ever talk about that? Ah, uh, no, I don't. <laughs> I don't. I don't remember. I don't remember hearing. And I gotta tell you, man. And I that. gotta tell you. <laughs> no, no. But those stories and those legends, Japanese really do believe in those things. I thought it was like a very interesting and and kind of brilliant way to tell this story. You know, just and you know the writers and the producers they made a conscious decision to kind of take elements and pay an homage to the genre of J horror and uh, all those horror movies that you see come out of Japan that they do so well. Um, and I think, uh, you know, the way that we kind of adapt it for American and, and worldwide audiences, it's, it's really well done and it's pretty freaky. You know, people are getting really uh, scared and, and uh, you know, freaked out by the show. So that's great. Well, it's done amazingly well. I know another cast member of yours lived through it too, George Takai. Did he share any stories while you were on set? Oh, yeah. I mean, that was another part of this whole thing that made it so special, getting to work with a legend uh, like George Takai. And uh, he, yeah, he definitely, whenever there was downtime, you know, uh, took the time to share uh, about his experiences, you know, growing up in the camp and um, you know, he was a young boy when it happened, so he didn't really know what was going on. He thought it was like, uh, he thought it was almost fun, you know, like like they're going off to summer camp. Um, but, you know, later on, he reflected on, you know, the kind of torment that his his parents were going through. And he just released a graphic novel called They Called Us Enemy. And it's really interesting. It's a graphic novel. It's like a comic book style where he tells about, you know, he, he spans his whole kind of life really about, you know, his childhood being in the camps and then eventually, you know, transitioning into Hollywood. So he's made it his life's mission to educate people about these camps. So to have him be a, a consultant on the show as well as a co-star uh, was really special. You know, there were times on set where he would look at the dishware and say, oh, this is too nice. You know, we need to d dirty it up. It wasn't like this in the camp. So they would on the spot switch it out, you know, or he would say, you know, the guys in the kitchen weren't wearing those chef's hats. You know, they were wearing the, the headbands, kind of like the, the Japanese headband style, you know, to soak up the sweat. So it was really valuable to have him around, but it was also just special, you know, to have him on the set and really set the tone of, you know, uh, reminding everyone, you know, this actually did happen. Yes, it is a horror TV show, but uh, this actually did happen to, to real people, including my own family. So everyone treated it and approached it with a really high level of reverence and, and dedication to, to getting it right and telling the story accurately. So that I think that that only upped the intensity, especially when you get into the more uh, creepy horror elements. Um, so they kind of work hand in hand and it, it just really makes for a really gripping uh, viewing experience. Are you still there? <laughs> oh, I'm here. I love your answer, man. <laughs> Sorry. You know what? This episode's about you. Nobody else could have took your position in this TV series. Uh -oh. You are Chester. Chester is you. It's like all in one. It's like they picked the perfect dude for this. So I'm going to be honest with you, man. I'm a fan of the show. I'm not a fan of many shows, but I am a fan of this show. And I know the terror. They have like this thing to change every year. I wish they can keep this going with you guys because they hit something on the head really amazing with this. Oh, thank you. I appreciate that. But, you know, I got to say the entire cast is really top notch. And I, I found that, you know, when I did some of my best acting or I felt the best about my acting was when, you know, I was in scenes with uh, my, my co-stars, my castmates, because they're so great uh, and an international cast as well. And with specials, every character that is Japanese is played by an actor of Japanese descent. But, you know, uh, Shingo Usami, who plays my father, Henry, he's from Australia. Naoko Mori, who plays my mother, Asako, she's from London. And, you know, Christina Rodlo, who plays my girlfriend, she's from Mexico. And a bunch of other actors, you know, Kiki Skizane, she's from Japan. And so, we, I mean, we have an entire uh, international cast of, of Japanese talent on display here and they really shine. I got to say that I was just reacting. You couldn't help but just react and be in the moment with these amazing performers. So I think people are really responding to the performances as well on the show. Well, of course, absolutely. Yeah, don't get me wrong. The entire cast is great in the TV series, and we'll get to that later. Mm -hmm. How was it 
when you walked on set initially? Because I know a lot of it is like, you know, produced and done and green screen and sets Mm -hmm. like that. But I heard a lot of it's actually built. Was it kind of crazy looking at it when you went there? Oh, definitely. Our production designer, Jonathan McKinstry, is just amazing you know not just a lovely man but also just super super talented and every time we walked onto a new set we were all just blown away by what he had created you know whether it was the professor's house especially the camps you know they, he built these barracks true to the real size and you know i think they used like the real kind of uh, construction dimensions and the materials and everything and you know even the sets on the stage and I mean there's some sets you get to in the the middle episodes where he we kind of create these other worlds and you know kind of recreating some Japanese landscapes I mean it was just amazing amazing but yeah that all just adds to it you know just helps us as the actors to live in that world and create that reality but uh, it was definitely eerie you know stepping onto the internment camp you know seeing all those barracks and the soldier the guard towers you know kind of you know you really did feel like you were in a camp you know behind barbed wire that just added to the horror of the whole thing as well just looking at everything and being involved in that and probably going back home and sharing these stories with your family it must have been really amazing to do that you were involved with a lot of spooky stuff and kiki which I can say is an amazing character. And she plays Yuko Tanabe. She's actually your mother on the show, which you found out last episode. Let me tell you something. Last episode, oh, crazy, man. Yeah, when you right? found out what everything's about. Like, she's your mom, and she's trying to get you because she wants to bring you into the afterlife or one of her blood relatives into the afterlife. Spoiler alert. Hey, uh, it happened late, already. But... It happened already. <laughs> yeah, that was last yeah, episode. Yeah. And, yeah. you know, by the time they listen to this, it's already going to be the next one. So it's all good. <laughs> Kiki, she's uh, amazing, amazing. One of those actors I was talking about where, like, you're just, you're almost mesmerized by their performance. And, uh, you know, we had a few scenes together in the beginning. And then we kind of, you know, get, I we kind of go off into different worlds. But then we, we, we eventually come back together. She was great. And, you know, she's just this little Japanese girl, you know, she's so cute and she's innocent looking, you know, on set. But when she puts that costume on or that makeup or when she's giving her dialogue, you know, she really does embody that, uh, that, that demon or monster or whatever you want to call her. Uh, What do you guys call that again? There's different terms for it. There's a Yude, which is like a spirit um bakemono which i believe is you know kind of like a monster so there's different kind of terms you can refer to her because we you know it's it's hard to place what she is you know this is like a different genre of horror you know that we're introducing to to mainstream audiences these we're taking kind of elements uh you know from the j-horror so which and they they have their own kind of characteristics right like they they can't just disappear and and reappear you know she physically has to travel as you saw in uh, episode five i believe you know she physically has to travel uh across the sea in like order that. yeah in order to get to where she's going um and she has a physical you know body um but she's also able to inhabit you know other other people and so that was really cool just to, you know, watching the show because I, I haven't seen all the episodes. It's I've, I've enjoyed just watching it as they come out, you know, along with the audience and seeing all the different uh, special effects because uh, I think the special effects in the show are amazing. You know, a lot of shows, it can border on cheesy, you know, and uh, I think our special effects team did an amazing job, especially building out those worlds and, you well, know, especially AMC, with the, the possession they're yeah they're yeah, top notch right. at what they're Absolutely. doing they have some amazing tv shows and i wish man that this season keeps going on and it becomes something because i'm telling you man the fans are going crazy over this season we know it because we're in the world of comic-con man we we hear it we hear the streets mm-hmm. we put our ears down and we're like what terror infamy yeah let's <laughs> but um yeah it's been a real treat it's been a real treat hearing the feedback from the fans you know on social media and how people are responding to it and people of all backgrounds you know it's uh it's wonderful people all over the world you know actually yeah we're really pleased with the the response that we're getting to it and we're hoping that you know word of mouth can carry it on to other people who will enjoy it before the series came out we were posting and pushing it 
and getting cast members on the show. You coming on today, it's a perfect timing. We got some more cast members coming on, but this is kind of like a great point right now um, because it's going to make people want to watch the show even more because once they hear you and we're just like rambling on about how good it is, they're going to love it. Now, here's <laughs> another good actress on the TV series, Christina Rodlow. She plays Luz, your love oh, interest, your amazing. baby mama. Yes. How was that? Man? Yeah. <laughs> oh man. Oh, it was great. She's so amazing, but she's also just a nice person. You know, you think someone with that much talent, you know, can, can be, you know, behave a certain way, but she's just so down to earth and so lovely. And, you know, it was great to, you know, get rehearse and we kind of just had some initial phone calls in the beginning and just, we, we hit it off right away. And, you know, I studied Spanish in high school and I've, I've, you know, practiced, so, you know, some of my Spanish over the You're workplace. Up, and, huh? <laughs> yeah. Yeah. So we, I would always, you know, practice with her and I think that made her feel more comfortable or, you know, we were able to relate on that level, you know, because I'm sure, you know, being, uh, in a cast full of Japanese people being the only, you know, Mexican girl, maybe, you know, you can maybe feel out of place, but no, she was, yeah, we we're just like, we were all just like one big, you know, happy family up there in Vancouver. But, uh, I mean, she's just, I, yeah, I really enjoyed just watching her performances week by week too. I mean, she's, she gets, it's devastating, you know, what happens to her character and she just, you know, brings so much humanity to it. Um, and that, that really adds a lot, you know, to the bringing the heart of the, of the show. And it, it's, a, it's really, yeah, I mean, she's up my game, definitely. And so she's been amazing. Uh, working and with. she's, she, yeah, she's, she's blowing up, man. I mean, she's, she's going to be one of the next big things, I, I, I think for sure. Um, but people should definitely check her out in, in the terror. Yeah. Well, she played a really good role because the episode when she lost your two babies and she stood oh, by the water yeah. with her white dress. That, like, reminded me of the weeping mm -hmm. lady. Um, so added another creepy factor to it because uh, when those kids were walking by the lake, I thought it was uh, the demon that's going to take him. Let me tell you something about the demon, what I'm guessing. I don't think she's a bad lady. I just think she's pissed off and she's just killing people in her way to get to you. And she didn't know how to get to anybody because I've noticed she's possessing certain people and letting them go. But then some people, she's either blinding or killing. That's kind of like she's like, oh, they're disposable trying to get to you. And her number one goal is just having somebody in her afterlife with her. Yeah, which is messed up what she's doing but i think she has a little goal i don't find her that bad though to be honest with you i kind of yeah, feel bad that, for her that, man isn't that interesting that's what that's what i love about our show it's like yeah it's it's bringing it's giving a new dimension to the quote monster or the villain of the show and it's like bringing empathy to the so-called antagonist and it's really driving home the point you know that's what we're trying to do with the show is like you got to have empathy for other people and other communities. You know, you might not look like these people, but you're going to, you're going to um, feel for them, you know, what they're going through. And I think that's what we need right now in the world is, is a lot more empathy and people caring about one another rather than, you know, just going at each other, attacking each other and without trying to understand the other party. But that's, I, I think that's what's so great about our show is like the monster, you know, the monster in the first season was just this kind of it was like an animal he but was like, ruthless. Like, you know our mo <laughs> yeah our monster in this season is a is a person you know with a backstory with and then see when you get to learn about her motivations and yeah you really start to feel for her so that drives home a conflict within the audience but i think the way that it's resolved is really i don't want to give it too much away but it's i don't know something we haven't really seen before and it's, it's pretty amazing and i've heard from the people that have seen it it's just oh it's uh it's it's up there i don't know i'm trying oh, it's to choose sad. my words it's sad yeah, it's so many trying things. to choose my words yeah, hey, yeah. Man, it's so many things you know why because it's not just okay it's an internment camp but then it shows a lady how she came to america and then her husband was like an abusive bastard and then she gets put on the street then she commits suicide because she's so hungry and so sad 
Man, it's crazy. I actually, I root for her, like, to be honest with you. Yeah, right? I want her and I want Chester. I, I root for the both of you, dude. Well, only one can prevail. One no, can uh, prevail, yeah, well, that's you'll just, right. <laughs> you'll, just have to, you'll just have to stay tuned and see how it all pans out. Well, here's the thing. The show is doing amazing. You got some wonderful co-stars. You got so many cool people working on that uh, series. And I'm going to have your team have you come back on later but how is Derek Miu like you went to USC you've had a mm-hmm. great career so far so was acting something you wanted to do as a child or does this come on later in life yeah acting was definitely something that I kind of always dreamt about in my head you know when I I was uh glued to the TV you know I loved watching movies my my parents would always take us to movies and, uh, you know, I always dreamt about it and I always just imagined it. You know, we, we always watched the Oscars, uh, in our household. So you always just kind of imagined being up there one day. And what's crazy about this whole thing, I'm talking about how my family and my grandparents, um, have such a close tie to the terror is that, um, my grandfather who was in the military intelligence service in Japan, um, he, he went over there after World War II, and since he was a translator, he, he actually specialized in um, uh, kabuki theater. He was a, a censor. He would actually read the scripts of kabuki plays and make sure that there wasn't anything anti-American in them. But in the process, he became like really close with some of Japan's biggest kabuki actors. He became like drinking buddies with them. And he was kind of like a a performer, you know, and my mom does impressions or she, when I was little, she would do impressions. So I would do impressions growing up. And I, you know, I used to love watching Saturday Night Live. And, uh, you know, my grandpa would do Elvis uh, impressions at karaoke. And so that kind of started a little performance bug in me when I was little. And so now, you know, so many years later, I've been doing some stand-up comedy as well, and I, I do some impressions in there when I'm on stage. Um, but just talking about the art that actually came from, you know, someone up in my family that's related to this whole era that we're talking about with the terror. So, you know, I've been doing a lot of soul-seeking, soul-searching and introspection and reflection, especially from this show. You know, after we wrapped filming the terror, I went, we went to Japan and visited some uh, uh, family that I hadn't seen or hadn't even met uh, before and, you know, visited uh, this area called Wakayama, which is where the characters in the terror originate from. So this this whole thing, this whole experience has been uh, very profound for me personally. It must have opened your eyes to a lot of stuff because you're starting to think back like, okay, my grandpa... That's kind of crazy, man. This is like kind of a lifelong uh, destiny for you, maybe, to destiny, be in this maybe, situation, yeah. right? What do you think? Is that yeah. true? Yeah. I mean, I can't help but use that word. I know it's a big word, but like, yeah, it's, it's, it's crazy to think how it just timed out that way, you know, and the connections that I have with the, the terror and... Um, uh, it's there were so many times on set, you know, where I would have these moments of, uh, uh, you know, just looking up to the, the sky, you know, three, four in the morning after wrapping your day and just looking up at the stars in Vancouver and just, you know, just being filled with so much gratitude of like having this opportunity, you know, to be in this position to, to have this character on this, this big AMC show, but also to be able to, tell the story of you know my ancestors and of uh, my community because so many people from you know the japanese american community and people from my church and my family have you know reached out and it's it's sparked so many conversations you know people talking about you know because it wasn't something that they talked about back then it was a really painful period of their life and it's hard for them to relive it i mean my aunt who is still alive who was in the camps my grandfather's sister um you know i i went and spoke with her before filming and it's it's still very hard to to revisit those those times because it was was very painful but i think you know i i think it's great that we're we're finally telling this story on such a large platform because there are still people who are reaching out and saying, asking, oh, did this actually happen? Did this really happen? 
you know, and I went to spoke at a college and I asked the kids, like, I was just curious, did, did anyone not know this happened? And there were quite a few people who raised their hands. So I think that's great as well, you know, to, to get this out and to let people know that this happened because if they don't, it's easier to repeat it, you know? Honestly, I didn't know it happened at this scale. Like you, What? Hey, man, they no, tell you a joking. little about this stuff in school. They don't even no, educate know, you on this stuff. You know, no, they should, you're, you're they should so have a right. whole year about this. Yeah, they should screen the terror in every high school. Uh, yeah, <laughs> like College, university, grad school. College, yeah, at least college, right? That should be come on, required viewing in, in every university. Go, man. <laughs> <laughs> That's cuckoo, man. So a lot of people reach out to you now and they ask you questions. Do you feel like you've become kind of the ambassador to all this oh uh, i don't know if i would say that but hey i gotta know, say I i'm saying are... it you're not saying it you're being modest man all you guys are so <laughs> modest yeah i get oh, i get so many people coming on the show they're so modest i'm like stop being freaking modest just say okay <laughs> let's not say ambassador let's say liaison one of them okay because i know george took the yeah, ambassador one, role george one of them. oh yeah actually actually i think george i think george definitely you know what's crazy when i learned about uh, you know, doing all the, the press tour and getting to spend some more time with, you know, some of our uh, producers and creators are the, you know, Max Bornstein, uh, amazing screenwriter, right? He did uh, Kong Skull Island, uh, creator of our season of the terror, actually came up with the concept because he had heard George Takei speak at a lecture about his experiences in the camps. And he describes it as, you know, waking up in the middle of the night with this, this, this light bulb, you know, moment and idea and, and scribbling it down, you know, roughly of like, oh, maybe this could be something. And here we are with a completed season of The Terror, where we've told this Japanese horror story set against the backdrop of World War II and the Japanese American internment camps and having George be a part of it. But George being the seed from which this all uh, sprung out of initially, you know, just having that come full circle. I thought that was like so fascinating. Well, you know, the thing is, I got to be <laughs> honest with you, man. I've watched George's career for a long time. And George has been a guest on the Howard Stern Show for many years. So when I hear George, I hear this eccentric, funny dude that goes on Howard Stern and he says some crazy stuff. And he's done some right. crazy stuff on the Howard Stern Show. But I see another side of him now. I know he's an amazing actor and everybody looks up to him and he's the original. You know, he's come on. He's Sulu from from freaking Star Trek. Right. He's like yeah, uh, yeah. he has his own fandom universe around him just from that show. But I hear George whenever I hear his voice, I hear that eccentric, real voice of his. Does he talk very eccentric when, when he was on set? Do you kind of yeah, like, you know, I... see a difference in him now or something? I don't know. No, it's funny. Like you think. Before you know, you would think that that was a like a like a like a stage voice, right, or just like an on camera voice. But that's just how he talks, you know. He, after we cut, uh, does anyone know where the restrooms are? <laughs> where is uh, craft services? And there what you go. will they be serving for lunch? There you go. You know, it's like, <laughs> oh my gosh, dear. George, you actually speak like that. Speak like what? What are you talking about? Uh, nothing. Nothing. <laughs> yeah, he does. Have you ever heard him on the Howard Stern Show? Uh, well, maybe on, I will. He's this. on many yeah. episodes. And you can go back from like the 80s. He's been on like for so many years. And he's done some funny, crazy ass stuff. So if you want to hear his voice and hear some crazy stuff from him. But you know what? Now, these days you see him behind a Comic-Con panel and he's talking about the terror and all these other things, which is cool. It's great. So he has like these two sides of him. You know, this funny side and then his serious side because he lived through this. And of course, not everybody talks about this stuff openly. But now because of the terror, it's open and it's going amazing. So that's one cool thing about that. Now. You're on the show today, and I got to ask you some questions, man. Oh, boy. Do you believe in okay. ghosts? I definitely <laughs> believe in... Okay, the simple answer is yes, I do, because oh. <laughs> there are too many stories that I've heard from people. Actually, a, a member of our crew on the terror um, was telling me that uh, he had... First, first, I had learned that 
someone was saying, oh, he, he has a crazy story. Ask, ask him. He had a near-death experience. Um, I think it was from an accident or something. And he was in the hospital, and he had, like, an outer body experience where he saw himself and he saw, you know, the, the doctors and the nurses working on him and stuff. And then, you know, after he came out of that, after that, he started seeing these, like, these spirits. And, um, and he describes them as these kind of shadows, these dark, shadowy figures. He began having that kind of sixth sense where he would enter a room and get, like, a bad feeling about it. And then later on learn that there was something tragic and devastating that happened in that room. And, you know, it's, and when you hear stuff like that, it's That's hard pretty to freak. It's, <laughs> with, yeah. It, it, right. So like when you, after hearing about it with so much detail, having them tell you it in person and seeing the kind of uh, horror in their eyes, you know, uh, it's hard to discount that. Um, so I, I do. I, I definitely do. I mean, I haven't uh, experienced myself or, or seen so anything. nothing crazy not on that set? I, and, anything and, happened? And not that I want to. Oh, you mean while filming? Yeah, because I know you guys are there late night. I had Austin Azure on the show, and he did the movie Scary Stories We Tell in the Dark. And he said that he was Ooh. on set, and he got spooked out because the director actually made them go to a real haunted, crazy asylum and actually do the scenes, and they would put his trailer far from everybody else, and he was all creeped out all the time. Did you oh, experience yeah. anything like that? No, they didn't put us through anything like that. Oh, man. <laughs> um, no, I'm trying to think. I mean, the power went out in one of the old kind of – loading docks that we used to use it's converted into a, a filming studio now but nothing nothing really major. nothing too crazy yeah no, not that no i yuri personally experienced you. no yuri no just kiki no just, just kiki, kiki. <laughs> the only yuri that followed you. <laughs> yeah it's funny like seeing a demon like a yuri uh you know at crafty you know getting some coffee and some donuts <laughs> She's waiting in line with pieces for her yeah, face and, and, falling out. <laughs> yeah, and full makeup, you know, her skin's peeling off. And, She's yeah, like, hey, Derek, how funny. are you? You want a coffee? <laughs> You're like, ah, get away from me. Get away from me. <laughs> have, you been to, have you been to Comic-Con? Uh, did you get to experience that? Because I know your marketing was yeah. everywhere this year. Yeah, we went. We had a blast. We went down there this year for the terror, and it was great. I'd been there once before, and... I also got to do a panel for that. I was on this project called uh, Spooked, and it was uh, co-produced by uh, Bad Hat Harry Productions and Felicia Day's Geek and Sundry Network. And and that was actually like a comedy horror digital series. You know, people had asked if I'd done horror before, and I, and I said no, but someone remarked, oh, wasn't that horror? Because it actually, it, it kind of was. Um, you it was can't almost kind of like the this, geeks, uh, man. They know everything. <laughs> yeah, it was kind of. It was kind of like. Uh, it was kind of like a Scooby Doo type of thing. We oh, okay. we we were this ghost hunting team, and uh, we we're you know solving these paranormal uh, in events. But uh, that was the only other time I got to do Comic Con, but not on the scale of this past year of being on an AMC show where you get the, uh, you know, you get the the loading. The loading dock elevator entrance, you know, the Goodfellas uh, entrance into, the, you know, the the you convention got the center. Out, and, uh, entrance yeah, with the uh, golf yeah, cart yeah. and all the goodies. You got to all feel the stuff, reality yeah. of uh, being a celebrity at Comic Con. I've been to Comic Con for many totally. years. Totally, I mean, I've, I've seen all sides yeah. of it. You got the pimp side. That's it's good. Nice, <laughs> especially being a part of like the AMC family and you know one of our initial kind of welcome dinners at Comic Con. Yeah, I got to meet, you know, uh, Norman Reedus, there you know, and, and Chris Hardwick. I, I actually, it's funny, I actually PA'd uh, production assisted on a short film that Norman Reedus directed way back in the day. And so I, I remembered that and I was like, oh man, I wonder if you remember that. And so I brought that up. He's like, no way, man. I was just talking to my friend about that. Here, come here. And he brings me over to Chris Hardwick. And he was like, hey, man, this guy was just bringing up, uh, you know, that short film I was telling you about. And so I was like, oh, my gosh, Chris Hardwick. So I, I got to chat with both of them. That's so it's funny, cool. you know, like anything anything can happen at these things, you know. And Look, you yeah, felt like that with them. And then so many people probably felt like that with you. Did you get a lot of fan response this year? At uh, Comic-Con? Yeah. 
or just in general? Just um, Comic Con yeah. in general, being in the panel must have felt good because all these people were just like, you know, asking all these stuff. And uh, did you get to sign autographs? Did you do any of that stuff? Yeah, we did a little bit of that. It was funny. I went to I went to my church, um, and uh, you know, it's predominantly Japanese American um, Buddhist church, and um, you know, a bunch of people you know, introduced themselves to me and said that they're watching, you know, and they're, you know, really enjoying it. So that was, that was, that was really neat. Does it feel good? (laughs) (laughs) The attention. attention. Does it feel good having Um, the attention of the world? It feels, it feels good (laughs) that people are responding to this show, you know, and that people are enjoying it because, we really did feel like we were making something special. And, That's such you know, a you celebrity never know. answer. Come you never on. know until it Come comes on, out. Come on, Derek. It all comes out. <laughs> That's a celebrity huh? answer. Want... It feels amazing. Oh, want... Just say it. <laughs> yeah. Yes. 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 Keep More. coming. Ladies and gems like, out there, please. Follow me. Follow, follow Derek me. on Instagram, like Twitter. Me. <laughs> like me. If you can do <laughs> a movie right now. Would you work for Marvel or DC? Which one would you choose right this minute? Oh, my gosh. <laughs> Come on. Are you going to do this to me? <laughs> yes. I got to oh, do I do man. it to the best of them. Come on. Let's do this. <laughs> man. I don't know. I mean, DC's kind of hot right now, right? Uh, DC's for that hot Joker on movie. TV. Hot. Woo. I Depends, mean, right? Look, it... <laughs> it's a, I don't know. I don't know. Okay, be, okay. Be, Let's say this: you toss the coin in the sky, and it's just still, still turning. You don't know, right? Like two faces coin. That's it. Oh, there you go. There yeah. you go. You know your stuff. Yeah. We have a maybe geek I'm leaning towards the DC world. We have a geek in Derek. <laughs> <So>. <laughs> uh, you're like, yeah. <laughs> Listen, it would just be an honor to be considered for either of them. Oh, that's a good answer. And love the voice change, too. <laughs> oh, my. Listen, I would be honored just to, as long as George was involved, I would do it. That's what you should do. Answer everyone in George's voice from now on, and people will be tripped out. They'll be like, is that your real voice? <laughs> <laughs> Someone will come up to you at Comic-Con. That sounds like a fabulous idea. <laughs> <Ooh>. <laughs> There you go, man. Oh, my. There you go. Oh, my. George is probably going to listen okay. to this and be like, no. what the hell? He's got it. Yeah, George is going to berate me. Don't, hey, listen, don't you show. ever talk like me again. <laughs> That'd be funny, right? Who gave you the authority? <laughs> That's something Who you do you say. think you are? <laughs> That's funny, man. You're a funny dude. I didn't know you did stand-up comedy, bro. I didn't know that. Oh, yeah. Now I know that. Yeah. Well, I did. Yeah. I mean, uh, a few years I started doing that. Um, yeah, just as an outlet, you know, to do some impressions and whatever. And, um, it's been fun, you know, it's a nice, it's a fun tight knit community. You've got to meet a lot of people through it, Have you, met but Joe yeah, Rogan? Once, you know, I haven't met Joe Rogan. No, but I did get to meet Dana Carvey, my hero. Nice. Um, so that was really special, yeah, but he... yeah, I've got to meet uh, Ken Jung, you know, Dr. Ken. Nice. Uh, we, we had, yeah, we had a, a nice chat at the laugh factory in Hollywood and, and it was always because of the terror, you know, another comic had introduced me and said, yeah, Derek's blunt. He's, he's on the terror on AMC. And, and, you know, Ken knew what it was about. He's like, you know, congratulations, you know? So, uh, I got to have some, some quality time with him just talking about, you know, now that you're going to be more visible and just talking oh, about yeah. comedy. Oh yeah, absolutely. Absolutely. Yeah. You're going to be extremely visible because you're working on a TV show on AMC, which has become very iconic. The show itself is amazing. Mm-hmm. Your co-stars are amazing. You're doing really good, man. Very emotional. Very great. Now, Derek, if the fans want to follow you, what's your yes. social media handle? Instagram is at Derek underscore Mio, D-E-R-E-K underscore M-I-O. Twitter, it's at Derek Z Mio because at Derek Mio was taken. So I had to throw in the middle initial. So I got a page on Facebook. By next week, or once this airs, by the week after, I got to say next week. But anyways, by next <laughs> week, they basically start following you. You got a big career ahead of you, man. I see so many great things for you, bro. I see so many cool things. Oh. I see you like skyrocketing in the next couple of years. You probably got amazing projects in the works. Do you have any cool things that you can share? I know probably there's uh, a lot of secrecy, but... 
What can you share? Yeah, nothing, nothing that we can share at the moment. Yeah. Um, but <laughs> um, if you're in the LA area, I do have some shows coming up, and you can go to DerekMio.com to see uh, uh, where I'll be performing. Uh, I've got a few shows. Oh, well, actually, this is going to air a week from now. Okay, so I don't have any shows right now. <laughs> <laughs> well, we're still going to push your website, man, so they can watch one yeah. of your shows, come meet you in person, and uh, say what's up. And uh, you're going to get a lot of that, bro, a lot of it. Yeah, thank you. Appreciate that. Well, Derek, Appreciate it. Hey, man, you've been lovely, man, and I know you're a busy dude. Is there anything you want to tell the fans before we head out? No, just uh, thank you. Thank you, thank you, thank you for your support. Uh, those of you that are watching uh, the terror, please, uh, uh, if you're not watching, please watch. But for those of you that are, and, um, uh, we have some very enthusiastic, passionate, uh, viewers out there. So just thank you so much for your enthusiasm and, and for your interest in the show. And for also there's some been, been some really heartfelt, you know, messages as well, because this is a very painful, uh, subject matter, but, uh, Thank you for watching. Please uh, spread the word about the show and uh, appreciate it. And that's it. You're like, yeah, that's it. That's all I got to say. Yeah. Mike, Mike drop. Anyways. Cell phone drop. There you go. Ladies and gems out there, please follow Derek. He is on Instagram, Facebook, Twitter, any which way. It's Derek underscore M-I-O. Watch him on Terror Infamy. If you haven't saw it yet, binge watch it. You're going to love it. And wait till about episode um, five or six. You're going to see some crazy ass schnit. Um, other than that, go to DerekMIO.com for more information on his stand up comedy, things that are going on in Derek's life. Watch out for Derek. He's going to be the next superstar, or he is a superstar. And he's going to keep going and going and going. Say what's up to him. Say what's up at Comic Cons, buy his signature and photos, and uh, mm -hmm. give him a big uh, shout out and say you heard him on Comic Con Radio. Derek, this was the show. We're going to head out. Are you ready, brother? Yes, let's do it. All right. Good morning, good afternoon, and good evening. This is Galaxy with Derek Mio, and we're signing out from another amazing episode of Comic Con Radio. Now, Derek, we have to do this, man, and the most. Kind of, what did you say? Stiffest people have done this. We got to blow kisses to the universe. You ready, bro? Three, yes. two, one. Mwah, billion kisses. <laughs> there you go. Whoa. There you go. Chester just gave you guys a kiss. <laughs> did I do that one. right? Hey, that was lovely, bro. Okay. I'm going to put some echoes on that for everyone. <laughs> so anyways, that's a billion <laughs> kisses to everybody in the fandom universe out there. Like I said, follow him on social media. We just followed him. And please, Derek, be a guest of the show. Come on anytime. We have guests on the show, then we have friends of the show. So I hope you become a friend of the show. We'll get you on all the time. You could talk about everything that's going on in your life. And with that said, we got to say peace. Peace. Good morning, good afternoon, and good evening. This is Galaxy signing out from another amazing episode of Comic-Con Radio. Tune in for your daily shows of Comic-Con Radio. Go to comiccon-radio.com. Reach us on social media, Instagram, at Comic-Con Radio. Comic-Con Radio, taking the world one listener at a time. Thank you. Thank you so much for having me, Galaxy.